It's all yours, Mike. Great. Um, greetings to everybody. And uh, sorry for the short delay. I was uh, moderating another press conference. So this is the workshop for the elections database of the Green Party of the United States. And for all of you who are Greens, you're all familiar with the idea that we are supposed to think globally and act locally. Well, one of the ways of thinking globally and acting locally is running locally. And what our elections database does for us is give us an idea of how many Greens have run for office this year, past years, what types of office um, do they run for, how well do they do, uh, things that are interesting in their own right, but also if we want to strategize about how we're doing as a political party, we need to have some raw statistics about what kind of races do we run in, how well do we do in them, et cetera. So there's a chat here that as you think of questions while um, I'm, I'm going through the database, go ahead and throw your questions in there and we'll get to them as, as we go. Now, Lou, are you moderating? Are you gonna put me on so that people can see my screen? I don't hear Lou. We can see your screen. We can, you can see, see my it. screen now? No, no, you have to share your screen, Mike. Share right. a window or share a screen. Okay, so we do that by? At the bottom of the Zoom window, there should be a share screen button. Oh, there it is, okay. Host disabled uh, screen sharing. So you have to make me something. Um, not late for dinner, try but. It. <laughs> try it now. Okay, let's try it now. There we go. Okay, share. There we go. Okay, everybody, you, you see the screen here? Yes, we do. Thank you. All right. So let's, let's go and what you're going to see when you, you start with this site is uh, this home page right here. Summary of Green Candidates. This is a database of all Greens who have run since 85. That's when we started in our history. And there's a, a link here about the definition of who's a Green candidate, and we can touch in a bit about that uh, a little bit later. And we enter candidates in the database once they've qualified for the ballot. Uh, before they've qualified for the ballot, we don't know if they will qualify for the ballot or ever. We don't want to misrepresent to the public about um, we might have 10 people who file for office and don't qualify. We don't want to overstate who is um, running for office. So, all right. So now, as we scroll down here, we see that so far in the database, we have 78 people who have been entered for all different types of offices. On the left side here, you see the election date uh, that they're running in, scrolling down, di different states, different offices, a lot of people in November. And then here, these are folks who are in Missouri. There's a green primary there. They're first going to be listed as candidates in the primary. Once they win their primaries, they're all uncontested. They'll go on to the general election. Same thing here with these greens running for office in Maine. Right now, there's about 50 some greens uh, that we know about who aren't yet in the and then Mike, the first question distorted. that you would have is, Mike, Mike can I interrupt, Mike? Um, yes. Your, your, your audio was very distorted there. Uh, perhaps you might stop your video and just use audio in the presentation. Wow. Um, let me just see what else. Let me close my email here and that might help. Okay. You're clear now, Mike, so maybe that was it. Okay. Um, you know, getting rid of the email. Come on. Be good. Close. Um, all right. You guys are hearing me now? All yep. the way in Hawaii, Michael. All thank you. Hawaii, Michael, all the way in you. Hawaii. Okay, great. Okay. So let's assume that you've come here and um, let's go back to the uh, last regular full um, election year. And you see on the right side there where it says view races by year. So you can literally um, go ahead and 
go back to any year in our history. So here we are in 2018, last uh, even numbered year, almost 300 races, certain number of states, certain number of victories. And when you go through here, let's say that, all right, who, who you're interested in finding out about. One of the, the folks that was a very interesting candidate in 2018 was Kenneth Mejia. He's a green who ran in California and uh, California has this ridiculous system where there's only two candidates on the ballot in November. Very few greens have made it to those races, but we did with Kenneth. And he got in this race, the highest percentage that we've ever had in a two way race for US uh, House of Representatives in the country. So you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, I'm in a state and we have some greens who want to run for Congress what can this database do for me? I can go back and I can look for Greens who have run for Congress before and look at their race and what I can learn um, about them. And here on the right side, where you see um, view offices by race, if you click on federal offices, that will take you to a list of all the Greens who have ever run for US Senate and US House. And you can go ahead and scroll through them and, and find anybody, but here, we have Kenneth Mejia. So how does this work? First, there's a general information page about each candidate where it says more about um, so-and-so. And I clicked this on this one on Kenneth and it's a little slow here, but there we go. So there's a home page, <coughs> excuse me, for each candidate. And you see here that any race that they've run in before, um, you can go ahead and, and click on that one. And then uh, we have a headshot uh, for each per person. So this one with Kenneth. So we'll go back now to um, the, his race for 2018. And what we're gonna find is that there were links um, that he had here to his campaign website, his Twitter, his Facebook. And you can go back and see a bit about how he had run that race. Now, one of the things that we found here um, he's let this Mejia for Congress uh, lapse, and I'm not going to take the time to go, but it's got some random sites. Somebody went ahead and um, bought his URL, his domain, after he was uh, <laughs> done with his office. So one of the things that happens when you manage the database, I don't know how many of you are familiar with archive.org, the Wayback Machine site, but what's going to happen with this is somebody from the state that you're in, we are appointing agents for each state party for them to go ahead and work and maintain their data. I've been doing it essentially for the whole country and we're gonna have passwords for each state to go ahead and do their thing. So something like this with the Mejia one, there's archive.org and you're gonna push this link into archive.org. Archive.org archives websites around the world. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna find an older version of Kenneth's um, campaign website and replace that here. But that's one of the things to remember for your candidates is uh, if you can spend the money and hold on to your domain, it's a good resource and we don't want to lose that. So you could go ahead, click on these different um, races to, or different links to learn more about how Kenneth ran his race. But what does it look like from the back end? Um, you know, here you see where he ran, which district he ran, the length of the term. Um, oh, also here, government results. One of the things that happens with government results is over time, your secretary of state will change the link that lists your, um, your final results and they just do it. They do it, county um, registrars do it, um, secretaries of state do it. So often um, in, in terms of maintaining these lists, you have to go back and again, find where they've, they've, they've moved everything. So now here, let's take a look on the back end. And um, through the wonders of our internet, it will get us there. So this is a WordPress site, all right? It's a WordPress site. And every time we have a, a candidate, we go ahead and there's a whole bunch of information to enter for them. There's a, so let's assume, okay, we were just doing this from, from ground zero. We'd go ahead and we'd start in this field and we say Kenneth Mejia runs for this office. And literally you have to put in the word runs for a particular office uh, because the way that's phrased 
determines how a lot of other information shows on the site. The pull down menu then that lists all the candidates. Um, there's a, a part of the database that lists a name for every person. So like in Kenneth's case here, you go to the pull down menu, you pull out his name and each time that he would run, it would connect back to his name and that other page we looked at that showed that he had run two times. Um, that's how that piece works. There's a, a nice um, setup here um, for the calendar to find the elections date. Then um, here we have election type. So there's a whole, this is a very interesting feature here. You see here on this pull down menu, there's all these different types of races that we run in. And this is one of the analytic tools that this database gives us the capability for where like, for example, in California, when we run for city council, our races are nonpartisan on the municipal level. But in New York state, municipal races are partisan. So how do you compare Greens who have run here in, say, nonpartisan municipal seat uh, plurality races versus a partisan municipal seat uh, uh, partisan race? So this sort of this whole capability here is a, is a really good way for us to be able to to study and judge how we we we've done in different types of races uh, the, the district you ran in the state the county then um, a little bit further below here uh, screen is slowed down um, some other interesting stuff was it a partisan race or not was it an incumbent was the green sponsored by their local party now this thing, the local uh, endorsement, uh, right now we're still developing some of the capability with this site. So this field doesn't show on the front end yet, but it will. So if your county party or your state party endorsed a candidate, you will literally be able to put a link of that endorsement into this field and that will show on the front end for the, the public to go ahead and, and learn about this person. Here you see all the, on the right side, where all the links for that candidate's um, uh, different uh, web pages, final results here, place of finish. Uh, this actually should be linked there to say that the race has been certified, that we have final results. Um, and then we've actually just added this additional field here, which I'm checking for CA. Um, this is a new capability that's gonna give us a little bit more ability to judge by uh, state. So now here's, a, let's, let's jump to another candidate. Here's, Char, oops, here's Charlene. Um, oh, did we lose her? Oh no, did we really lose her? Well, all right, let's go back to, um, let's go back here then to the, um, the homepage here. And um, first I just wanna see in the chat, any questions about where we've gone so far? Um, I don't know that there I can There aren't see any it. questions in the chat. All right, thank point. you. Good, good, because I didn't know if I could see that. Okay, so, all right, so your, your, your first dynamic is here, your homepage, you look at any year you want, you go to that year, you find any candidates. The ones that have these stars are the ones who got elected. And there is, uh, when you click on this, this brings you to the, um, the people who won that year, number one, and then ultimately it goes to the number of Greens who have been elected all time. And um, while we're waiting for that to come up, okay, so victories. So what happens is this is this page uh, under victories, which is um, list all the races that we've ever had every race that we've won and um some of them are partisan again we mentioned before about how many was up under my car huh what's that somebody talking about their car okay that's a little weird um <laughs> all right so here you can see which races have been uh, partisan local races uh which ones are not so the um, going back here to the now to the the top the pull down menu, so here we have what happens with the database is is a couple of things. 
when you have this raw data where you have every candidate who's run in our history, you can search them all. You can put a name for a person here in the right side and find them by name. Um, you know, you can search by year, et cetera. Then we get into the analysis of um, what does all this mean? And um, we can extract from this. So we're doing now a lot of data analysis now that we have the information in the database. So one of the interesting questions is, all right, um, how many young greens do we have who have run and, and, and got elected before? And this is something that we certainly want to be able to promote. So from this database, we have manually gone ahead and extracted this list and then done a little bit of, of breakdown on how many per age. Um, there's actually probably about another 10 that I have to add to this, but this is a nice resource to be able to say. And also some of the offices, look at here, Common Council in Madison is what city council is in other places, Board of Aldermen in, in New Haven, Connecticut. So here's a case where we've had some greens being elected to, to very local, I mean, you know, very important local offices like city council. It's not just tiny, um, uh, you know, type of things. Jason West was a green in New Paltz, uh, New York. He was actually the first person to do uh, legal gay marriage when he was a mayor there. So, um, so that's one of the options that you get from this pull down menu. Also, we, we've had a question of, well, you know, have Greens ever actually been able to govern anywhere? Um, have, has there ever been a city council majority? So this is a chart that has the places where we've had the most Greens on a legislative body around the country. And when you search through this, you can see, when you search through, and if you just want to put in the word majority, here I'm showing uh, first ever, or the fifth ever Green City Council majority. So this is in Fairfax, um, uh, California, that's in Marin County. I know Mimi Newton, who is the co-chair of our state coordinating committee in California. She lives uh, very close to Fairfax, welcome Mimi. And therefore, here you can go through and um, New Paltz had a majority, here Sebastopol, California had a majority. Here in Arcata, the first ever Green City Council majority with a link to an article in, in Green Pages. Uh, here in Nevada County, California, our first ever school board majority. So through all of these, um, going back, there's a lot of counties in Wisconsin where the Board of Supervisor races um, have very small districts and um, we've had several people elected there. So um, this one goes you know, all the way down to where we've had at least two members in different, uh, different elected bodies. Okay, another place, um, most years, like which green, if you ever wondered, which green has held office the longest? Uh, so here, this is what this chart does. David Conley was one of our first greens ever elected. He was elected back in 1986. He served for 32 years in Wisconsin um, on Douglas County that's up uh, across the water on Lake Superior across from um, uh, Duluth, Minnesota. And we kind of scroll through here as well. Annie Young in Minneapolis, she just passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, our Good Times uh, was elected at, in a partisan race. Art, arts race, um, it was nonpartisan there in Wisconsin and Minnesota, but Art was on the ballot uh, as a Green Party member in rural uh, Southwestern Colorado, 18 years there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so there again is another answer to your question. How, um, what's been the longest time that a Green's been in office? Um, most consecutive years. So this is one, how many places have had at least one Green in office for a long time? And um, of course, again, you've got those 32 years in Wisconsin where um, Dave Conley was on, but a bunch of other Greens were on there as well. Uh, Point Arena in California had 20 years on their city council and so on and so forth. It's the same sort of thing where uh, local Greens have been really strong. And when we look at where do we want to go for um, 
we try and pick places for higher office, Caroline Lucas, who is our green member of the British House of Commons, she got elected there in a district where the Greens were very strong on their city council. And this is the kind of thing when we're trying to then locate a legislative districts around the country, um, where have we been strong on a municipal level? So that, that, that whole category, how many green mayors we've had, that's a, a, a interesting, uh, rich area. Now, here under election history, so those were mostly just greens who were in office, this area gets more into the, um, the different types of races that we run in. So let's take a look here at write-ins. One of the interesting um, things about write-ins is normally you think, well, I'm gonna run as a write-in and I got no chance and what's the point? So 238 greens of all of our greens in history have run as write-ins and 132 of them have done for, for local office and 106 for state or federal. So how many of you would have guessed this? Of the 132 who have run for local office, almost half, 64 have been elected to local office. So maybe there's more to running for uh, as a write-in candidate than you might have thought. So how do we get a little bit deeper into that? And this is again, the kind of thing that your local party, your county party uh, should be looking at. So I've gone ahead now and I've done the analysis here on all of these 132 local offices. So the ones that we've run for um, the highest one, county supervisor, for mayor, for city council, for school board, and that's how many have run for them and how many have won. So we've actually won a lot of these much higher uh, level races, uh, 10 for water boards, et cetera. What states run the most write-ins? Pennsylvania, uh, I think Hillary Kane from Pennsylvania is on our call here. They have won 20 out of 28 write-in uh, races, Connecticut nine out of 16. Um, so, uh, you know, again, what kind of races has um, Pennsylvania, have Pennsylvania Greens been running for and been successful for write-in campaigns? We look at those here, same thing uh, next in, um, in Connecticut. And what we're finding in, in both Connecticut and Pennsylvania is these very local races uh, sometimes don't always have uh, as many candidates for all the seats and the Greens in Pennsylvania and Connecticut have been on top of it and have gone in and um, filed candidates after they've seen who've run in those other races. And we've picked up office holders and then those people can go ahead and run for a higher level office later on and, um, and have a reputation now because they've, they've held office in uh, a, a local level. So here we, we kind of look at it in the other way. Um, oops, uh, Green's running for local government. Each type of local government office, how many have run for it? Eight for school board, four of them have been elected. Which state uh, has that happened in? So the, the reality is there's a lot, as we've seen for Green, there's a lot of possibility here um, to run for local office and actually win seats. And it's something that we don't always do. So that's something that we can learn from, from this uh, database. Let's go back to, um, let's go back to the pull down menu again. And um, we can see how many greens have run unopposed. Here is that question about election types. So that goes back to the question, are they uh, partisan races? Are they nonpartisan races? Um, okay, a little, all right. So this, this one um, still has a little bit more of technology side to develop, but what you can see is it has, um, it has given us summaries of how many greens run in these different types of races. Uh, and then eventually these are gonna link to each of them as well. So uh, I won't do all the analysis here, but I'm going to do that eventually. And there will be kind of a summary of all these different types of races. Again, where do we run the most? 
where do we have the most success? This gives us that kind of, of tool. And then of types of offices, this is your chart where um, this will take you and show you again um, how many greens are running for each type of office. Now, one of the interesting, interesting things here for state legislative, for example, is across the country, uh, everybody calls their upper house the state senate, but for the lower house, different states have a different name. So in one state, it might be state assembly, another house, it's the state house or state house of representatives, or in Virginia, it's the uh, house of delegates, et cetera. So this one has the list of all the people who have run for a state legislative seat. And again, um, we're gonna be able to, if, if you're a candidate and your candidates are looking for, um, you know, what, what can I learn from other Greens who have run? This gives you a direct place to go ahead and, and look for. Now, here's an interesting one, Adi Bach, this is the first Green in the United States that ran and got elected um, to a state legislative race. She was elected in California in a special election. One of the things over time that we're going to be doing is there were several articles about Audi being elected back then. And from a historical standpoint, we're going to be able to enrich and have a few more links and have this be more of a story about how it was that she, she got into that office. Um, I want to stop again and see if there's any questions in the chat. Okay. Um, now what I want to show you is, um, all right, what do we do with um, kind of the big picture? I mentioned before that on the right side of the, and by the way, how can, can all of you see these fields and um, do I need to make it bigger? Yes, it's really small on my screen. Okay, all right. So this chart is a chart where I have um, gone ahead and manually, and this needs to be updated. This is something I did in 2018, but just like you, you can go to individual years and find out um, which candidates ran, then there has to be some overall work and uh, to kind of plot how we've done um, in each of those. So what this chart has done is I've gone through and I've extracted all that data. And then um, the blue lines, of course, are even numbered years and the white ones are none. Now, some of this data needs a little bit more updating, but what does this tell us? So let's, and what I'm gonna do also with this over time is I'm gonna do a chart that just has the even numbered years so we can compare our performance in even numbered years and then the odd numbered years because there are different elections held in each of them. But let's go, for example, down these two columns here, local office and local office elected. So what we've seen here is in even numbered years, 104 out of 285, 132 out of 304, 113 out of 281, 133 out of 307. So we're seeing somewhere where around 30 to 45 percent of our candidates each time are not running for state or federal office, but they're running for local uh, municipal office. And what is our winning percentage in those races? So I've gone down on, on this column here, this local office percentage, and you can start getting an idea of how many people that we run in those offices, how many are actually getting elected. And then specifically out of all those local offices, the, the biggies um, in our world are for local offices are mayors, city council members and other uh, town council, village councils, county supervisors or commissioners, and school board or college board. So one, two, three, four, these four columns are what I would say are, is the uh, tofu and brown rice of uh, our green candidates. These are the, the substantial highest level local races 
and how many Greens are getting elected in those races. So when you look at, at, at these races um, and you see how many were winning and you go ahead and do some analysis, some of our better years, 20 out of 54, 18 out of 64, 21 out of 76, of that number of candidates, how many of them were not serious candidates at all um, and just put their name on, you know, maybe that was 10, 15, 20%, maybe even a third of them. And, and then you can kind of think through of the rest of these, of people who were serious candidates that were winning. I mean, we may not be winning half of them, but we're certainly winning 20%, 25% of, of, of people who are credible candidates. So as you're trying to convince people to run for office in your area, you can go ahead and you can point to this information and to be able to say, yeah, Greens have been winning. They have been getting reelected. One of the charts, which I haven't finished yet, that, um, and then, oh, by the way, this other one, local offices here. So these are the, the down ticket, the easiest ones. And here we're winning a lot of these. Some years we're winning um, more than 50%. This is your park board, your water board, um, a lot of those other types. One of the other charts, which I'm going to be doing based on this data I haven't had the time to do yet, is how many of our incumbents are getting reelected and for which, um, which types of offices. So um, again, coming, bring it back. Um, what's gonna happen as well in these col columns is I'm gonna put a percentage number of how many of our total numbers um, have we been running in, in each of these. Now, one of the, the, the base, one of the benefits from a chart like this, and there's two places in the database, there's going to be this kind of manual chart. Um, and then there's also going to be uh, a chart about how many electeds we've had. So you can see in our history, when we started here, it dropped down to 1985. You can see when we first started and kind of as you track green history, 92 was our breakthrough year where we started running a lot and we started getting ballot status. 89, 86, um, and then boom. Here's where we started to take off. The Nader campaign in 96 started becoming a signal to independent progressive people around the country that it made sense to run with the Green Party. So a lot of people had already filed in 86, but the Nader campaign started increasing state ballot status and more candidates. And that's how you see our numbers started going up. Here was our golden era, the golden era in 2000. Um, here in 01, we even had more candidates in the odd-numbered year than we did the even-numbered year. And then, boom, 562 in 02. Um, 83 elected that year, 441 in 04, 389. And what, what started happening to us is our numbers started to, to go down as the backlash to the Green Party happened, um, the, the 04 year. Uh, was a very anti-Green uh, Party year after 2000. So kind of what you see here is the benefit of the 96 Nader campaign played itself out in these large numbers. And then the backlash to the Green Party, which really started hitting us in, in 04 from the Kerry campaign, um, started leading us to end up having smaller numbers. And you've seen that our numbers per year have been dropping ever since then. Um, another place where you can um, compare the number of how we've been doing each year, and this is also something that um, is in development, but is an important thing for us to have. So in this chart here, number of Greens hold an elected office at any particular point, point in history. Um, eventually, the database on the back end is going to be enhanced so that we can literally put in a whatever date we want, and we can see how many elected Greens we have in office at that point, that is a future, um, that is a future uh, capability. So right now what happens is I periodically go ahead and create a link to how many Greens we have in office at a current time. So this is eventually going to be put into chart form as well, but I recently did this gathering, and let's go back again kind of to the olden days and follow us in history. Um, back in the, 80, in, in the 90s, this actually was hosted on my site, Feinstein.org, um, to show like we didn't even, we didn't have our national database in, until 
2000, 2001, when we started a national party. So went back to that time about when the 96 Nader campaign came in and started kicking us off. So we had 59 Greens in office after the November 98 election. And then we started growing and more Greens were running. And you see that when we got then all the way to the 2000 elections, it's gone up uh, by a whole third from 59 to 80. And then over time, and then each of these links shows who was elected at that particular time. So now we're getting into 02 and we're up to 140 and then in 115. And as of the November 02 elections, 171. And what you'll find also when you go to that link, and I'm going to uh, put it up here, um, you'll see how many greens were holding different types of positions at the time. So we keep growing, we keep growing, um, 180 in 03, we get to 04 and we pass 200. And we get all the way up by the end of 04, now 221, we keep growing. So greens continue to run for local offices um, with that wave and keep succeeding to get to our high point here in April of, of uh, 2006. 232 greens. Let's take a look then. And um, again, a lot of that was still on my site on Feinstein.org. I've had to go back and into archive.org and, um, and go back and find that. Uh, all right, that's taking a second. All right, so in the old days, um, so here was that list. And uh, you see back then, even though it was on my site, it was in service of the Coordinated Campaign Committee. And um, here, and, and this is, a, and I, you know, I, I really don't love to be talking about bad news, but here in California, for example, this is an, o, um, this is an 06, we had 63, now we're down to about 40, but look at how many city council members and mayors we had. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. I think this is 2026. 20, so the types of offices that we have today are not as high. We have four city council members in California today and they're all in smaller cities. Back then, um, Ross Mercurimi, San Francisco, uh, the Board of Supervisors, City Council, the same thing. So um, anyway, this is a, you know, kind of a, a looky look at, um, how many we had in, in these different states back then. Um, here's a case, now, here's a case in Washington, D.C. They have this Advisory Neighborhood Council, Advisory Neighborhood Commission form of government, and they, um, that's a very accessible local government. They only ran one guy in, in uh, 2018. They used to run more. That's a place where you can get easily elected. So um, anyway, that's, um, you know, kind of looking back uh, for each state. So uh, this is a way for us to track how many that we've had elected over time as well. Um, let's see if there's any questions in the chat at this moment. Lou, can you tell me that? Um, nothing appearing in the chat, not as a question. Um, there was a comment that I think when you were looking at those numbers across the years, uh, some, uh, Benjamin felt that the percentages of local campaigns should be much higher. We don't have our priorities right running more candidates for higher office, especially when local offices give better win percentages. So, so now let's take what, what he just said, and thank you for that comment. And now let's say that your state party is doing a call for candidates. And you want to be able to say, look, the record with Greens running for office is this this is how many local candidates have won. And then you include a link in your state or in your county that lists the number of local offices. So this gives you substantial in the real world data to be able to say how well we've done in those races. Um, you know that, otherwise people are saying, well, uh, I don't know. But somebody who wants to plot out um, a political career, the idea of winning a local office can become more real this way. Um, this is also a tool for us to be able to say, and again, this is where we get into the analysis part 
And not only um, do we do this through the Coordinated Campaign Committee, but also uh, through our national publication and green pages, as we do more analysis on this, and we have home pages that can talk about this kind of data, we're going to be able to have a piece of paper or a virtual people piece of paper to be able to point out this is how we've done in those kind of races. Um, uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's just a, a ground level of, of reality. Now, in the training for your state parties, um, for the people who are going to update the data for your state parties, we're going to have separate trainings for them where um, they're going to learn how to do, put the data in for the back end. But we also have this function, the submit additions on the right side there. So what is this? This is something for any person around the United States or even out of the United States who knows about the United States. If there's somebody who is in office that, or is running for office, that they go ahead and they give us this information. And then if you fill out this chart, it gets emailed to us directly. And um, then this is a way for us to learn about candidates. So both your own state party will go ahead and put some of this information. You see all this level of detail that um, we want. You may not have all of the detail, but uh, you know, you'll have some of it. Now, one of the things that happens when you, um, when you um, report somebody is, I mentioned before, we only put people in the database once they're on the ballot. And I know for some of you folks, um, that can be frustrating because you want to publish, publicize yourself no matter what, but the, uh, the election hasn't come yet. But um, we're also developing another place in the database to list people who are uh, indicated their intent to run, but they haven't been on the ballot yet. But let's say that you filled out a chart and you've said, um, you know, so-and-so is going to be running this November. If this field here, government website showing candidate is already on the ballot for an upcoming race. So, um, for example, with uh, Nikhil Ananda, our friend here from the island of Maui, from Maui in, in Hawaii, um, when he's run for office a lot, once he qualifies for the ballot, the Maui Island um, Elections Registrar, and I may not be using the right terms, but whoever handles elections, will have a link showing Nikhil Ananda is on the ballot for November. We need to see that link before we put that person in the database. So a lot of people, because that proves to us that they're on the ballot. A lot of people, when they send in information, they don't include that, that's okay, but that creates more work for us on the back end and then we go ahead and add that person um, to the database. Then there's also this link here of what is the definition of a green candidate. That is both um, listed here and it's on our homepage. And the, the, the point about that is there are criteria for, um, uh, which one, let's see, where is it? Here, um, there are criteria about how we define what a green candidate is and why do we have to do that? There are 50 different states with 50 different laws, 27 states, um, or sorry, 31 states in DC, you can register to vote in a political party, other states you can't. And what we want, and the main thing of this definition of a, of a green candidate or office holder are these things. We want a consistent definition of who is a green, um, so that we can compare green candidates and office holders over time. We also want a, and this is really important, um, a definition that draws a clear and unambiguous line between who is and who is not a green. And this also helps us um, identify the Green Party as an independent and distinct political entity. Now, why did we do this? Um, I mean, this sounds like a good idea in general, but many years ago, in 1999, in the state of Washington, the Seattle Greens claimed that five of the nine city council members on the Seattle city council back then were Green Party members. Well, the, dish, the definition of a Green Party member in 1999 in Washington state, or that was even before they had a state party, I think, the Seattle Greens was you paid $20 to the Seattle Greens. 
Well, there were five Democrats who wanted the Seattle Greens endorsement, just like you'd want the Sierra Club endorsement, and you pay to be a member so you can get endorsed. So those five Democrats paid the Seattle Greens, and the wonderfully na naive Seattle Greens at the time claimed they had a city council majority in, I think, what was the 11th or 12th largest city in the country. So we, we realized that what we don't want in our database is to include people that are Democrats or Republicans or, or any party, but then your state party has a rule that, well, we'll, we'll let a Democrat who also says they're a Green be uh, included. You can do that in your state party. And there are a handful of state parties who have kind of dual endorsement sort of things. But for the purposes of the Green Party, we don't want to claim anybody who's a member of another political party. So um, there's, there's that dynamic in here as well. And then um, this does mean that we kind of have to implement it somewhat differently in different states, but um, that's because different states have different dynamics. So anyway, that's something that you, you will also be checking in on when you get into the database. Uh, and there are a few states that it's frustrating for, but that's, like, I'm, one other example is in um, Wisconsin, the, the Greens there have sometimes supported candidates who are very green, but they want the Democratic endorsement and they, enjoy, they join the Democratic Party to get the Democratic endorsement. We don't include them. And it's frustrating for the local Greens there, but that's just the way it goes. So, okay. So let's go back then here to our, our homepage. This section, presidential elections, has not been filled in yet. This is a relatively recently developed section and therefore you're not gonna see any numbers in here, but what's going to happen once it is, I mean, how he's in here, we were just doing some draft on this page, but it's not ready to go yet. But what's gonna happen is in this page, this is gonna become a one-stop shop for four different areas. There's the, the, um, the each individual state where they have a primary or um, a convention process or a caucus will list that information. Um, we're gonna then list what happened at the convention, how many votes everybody gets in each round in the convention. And then, um, oh, before the general. So there's two different things that'll happen in the primary. One is gonna be how everybody did um, in each state. And um, then this nomination, and, and our, our party didn't do this well this year, but th this page is gonna have kind of an overall delegate count procedure towards the, um, the, the, um, the nomination. And then finally, the, for the general election, this is gonna be a state by state um, list of how many votes was the candidate on the ballot or a write-in, how many votes, the percentage of the vote um, for each race. And this will all go back to 1996. So in this section, ultimately, we're gonna have a one-stop shop. And in addition to the, um, the numbers, we're also gonna link to all the videos we had from each convention, et cetera. So um, essentially from this database, and also the presidential candidates are gonna be separated out from the, the main portion of the database. Right now they're listed among all the other candidates that run for, for dog catcher um, and uh, get the cat out of the tree um, races, but uh, we're gonna lift them out and go ahead and just have a separate presidential section because that's a really different type of race. So, um, also what you'll see here, um, because this is me and this is, because I'm an admin, these are things that you wouldn't see here to get into the back end of the database. You see here, there's a couple. Um, William Bordfield, the qualification date is July 22nd to 24th, and he's gonna be paying $450 to get on the ballot. Um, I've already entered him, but the general public can't see that. But I entered him because I had some time, and once we get to the 22nd and he pays his fee, um, then there's, then this one's gonna be activated. And one of the fields that isn't yet publicly visible has been done on the back end and we still have to do a little bit of technology for it to show on the front end, but there's gonna be a field to like, how did you qualify for the general election ballot? And there's different ways in different states and some are harder, some are easier. A lot of us don't know what it's like outside of our state, but also when we're trying to 
like say we're trying to write an op-ed about um, ballot access and ballot access laws. It's gonna be easier for us if we have some sort of sense about how Greens um, are getting on the ballot in different parts of the country. So um, we're gonna have that as well. Um, Jimmy Cooper's case, they're waiting for a ruling on a ballot access case um, in his state because of COVID where they're trying to re, uh, lower the number of signatures that he needed for the ballot. Um, so that's kind of the basics. There's a whole nother workshop that I'll be doing for people who will be appointed by their state parties. Uh, Lou Novak, I know that we've asked Michigan to appoint somebody to enter your data and um, hopefully you're gonna pick somebody soon and then we're gonna have a, a, a Zoom conference to teach everybody how to go ahead and do all of that. But um, that's kind of a, the basics right now. Let's see if anybody has any questions in the chat. There, I, you know, there are a few questions in the chat. Uh, one great. came uh, some time ago when I think you were looking at that spreadsheet uh, yes. presentation. Uh, Chris asks, is there a way to distinguish active candidates for November and those who 2020 elections have already happened? Yes, good question. So two things happen. One, you have this thing of the date on the left hand, election date. So you can see that um, here we've got the people who are over and done with, their races were done earlier. And then, um, you know, and, and so on and so far. So yes. And then the second thing is, is that, and this is work that, that I do for the coordinated campaign committee and is going to become embedded in this page is I do periodic reports to the national committee and I post them on social media of spring elections report. And I, I have some examples of that. I don't have it handy and I'm not gonna waste the time getting to that, but like I will have done a report based on how we did on races through, now Mike Gams here is that's a special election. Um, so it might include that, but essentially there's a, a March through June period every year where we know people are in those races. And then I will be doing that kind of analysis, have that as a separate report. And then that will be also available um, each year for the races in that year. Other questions? Yeah, here's an interesting one uh, from Benjamin. Uh, goes to your definition of what is a Green Party candidate. Yes, and, th and this is Benjamin from Maine? Uh, yes, he's asking about, is Lisa Savage for US Senate in Maine considered a Green for these purposes? So um, he goes on to say she unenrolled to run as an independent for ballot access and was subsequently endorsed by Maine Greens, but is not technically enrolled anymore. Yes. Yeah, so Lisa's is a sad, um, a sad case. And by the way, just for the screen, so I'm showing Benjamin's history himself. He's a Green who has run several times for office. Here you see with this Green Stars, he's been elected a couple of times. Um, and this is a nice, um, you know, congratulations on that. So this is one of the nice things. Now, there's a headshot. We had a technical issue and we lost some of the, the headshots. And I will answer his question, but I just want to point out here that when we have somebody and we need somebody from the state of Maine to do this as well, they're going to go through and they're going to find us headshots for all the candidates in our history that don't have one. So we'll have Benjamin's smiling face here and then listing all those. So Lisa Savage, unfortunately, was not able to get on the ballot as a registered Green because of the signature requirements necessary during cold winter weather in Maine and because a lot of people who would have voted Green had changed their registration to, to vote for Bernie Sanders there. It was a tough year. So she had to go for independent. Um, but that brings up the, she had to go for independent to get on the ballot and she's been endorsed by the Maine Greens. But because she's not a Green Party member, she's not listed. However, that's a good tan, uh, segue to this question. This is a database, and I want to make clear, this is a database not of who is a popular green in your state. This is not a database of which greens have been endorsed in your state. This is not even a database of which greens are on the ballot in your state with a Green Party ballot line. This is a database of all Green Party members who are not members of other parties who have run for office in the United States. 
That's different than those other things. And why is it important? It's important so that we know in the United States how many of our members have actually run and been candidates. Then we can go into those subsets after that. But for example, in an endorsement case, we may, that you may be in a state where your state doesn't have an endorsement process. Or you may be a green in a area where the local greens do the endorsement and you're an elected school board member and they're jealous of you and there's three people in your local, they don't like you. You get all the TV coverage and they don't want to endorse you because they don't like you. And they think, oh, you're making compromises with the Democrats and the Republicans on your school board. But you're a green who's run for office. So we have a place to list endorsements and we are enhancing that place and Again, I showed you the field for that on the back end, and then that's gonna show on the front end soon. And you can, even if your state party has disendorsed somebody, um, even in a case like that, we can list that information on the front end and say the Green Party of such and such took this position, and here's their statement on it. So we give the, the state parties the ability to react, but, but the endorsement is just a nice subset of information. It's not determinative about whether you're on or not. And I know that some states now are, are dealing with like North Carolina this year, they now have a ballot line and congratulations to them after working hard for that for years. Well now registered greens in North Carolina, you see here, there are um, three folks on the ballot for November. I don't believe that any of the three of them were endorsed by the North Carolina Greens. And they didn't even know about all these folk running until the people were already on the ballot and they discovered them. Um, that was a shock for them. And now they realize our endorsement process doesn't control everything. There's gonna be Greens who run and we don't know them and that's the way it goes, but we can in include the endorsement. Another thing I wanna add on this and then Lou go to the next question is, in California, we're doing something that a lot of other states need to do as well. And Maine, I will call your attention to this in Maine, Benjamin, I hope that you can find the time for this. And also in Massachusetts, in races where municipal races, and excuse me, in states where municipal races are nonpartisan, how do you know when a green is running? And how do you know whether to include that person? So in Maine, for example, this year, we had a gentleman um, where am I finding? Young. Okay, here. Joseph Young. All right. Board of Selectmen. So the main Greens knew nothing about Joseph Young until they held Green Party caucuses for president this spring. And he contacted the state par party and said, hey, I'm a Green. Um, look what we found out about his history. I got, I got in touch with him. He's been in office as a registered Green since 2014. We didn't know about him. So we have added him. I went back, added him in the database. He's added into our past year compilations of how many greens we had. But here's the thing that your states need to do. If you have a voter registration list, and if you don't, you should have one, then you need to compare that to the list of greens who are running for local nonpartisan office. That's a lot of work. Um, in California, each of our 58 counties produces a list of everybody who runs in nonpartisan races. <coughs> and in other places like Maine, where they have these wonderfully cute, and this is my California prejudice showing, these wonderfully cute little towns <laughs> of you know a few hundred people, et cetera. And often it's just their town clerk that keeps track of this. The same thing, what about all those town meeting um, offices in Massachusetts or in, um, in, 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 in Maine. So we need you in your states to sit down and have somebody literally cut and paste the name of every person who runs for every municipal office that's nonpartisan into your green database. Since 2013, and then you find out which greens. I don't have this up in front of me, but I did this for a workshop for our state party. Since we started using Nation Builder in 2012 in California, um, which was our first time that we had this easy way of comparing our database, over 50% of the Greens who have run for local office that we knew about, we found that way who our party didn't know about. 
And these are people who are self-identifying in your parties and running for office and getting elected and then should be integrated into your party to look at your platform, to put out your press releases, et cetera. So certain number of states, and I've been in contact with several states this year, New Jersey says they're going to compare their list. Um, Colorado said they're going to compare their list, uh, et cetera. So that's a key thing that you need to do in states uh, who have that situation. What's next, Lou? Um, uh, Carol from New York just mentions we have several candidates running in New York that are not showing here, which is yes. the question, how do we get candidates entered? So the good news uh, for the New York situation is this. Um, we had some technical issues a, a couple weeks ago, and, and uh, here's Carol, whose name I don't want to mangle, um, but uh, since she, she called in here, um, oops, yeah, this is one of those issues where the, um, the apostrophes have created an issue. Okay, we have to fix that. It doesn't matter. Okay, so um, the, there's a ton of candidates in New York, and the state party agent process where people are going to go ahead and enter uh, information about new candidates um, is, is going to be happening where New York State has appointed Jason Nabueniak to um, be the agent for New York State. And in the next week, I'm going to be holding a Zoom conference with Jason and people from five other states. And they're going to take over the publishing of New York. In previous years, I would have gutted it out and um, killed myself <laughs> spending so much time because it's a lot of time um, to enter that data. So Jason's gonna be doing your data and I held off on doing New York so Jason can do it for the first time. And let me just show you, there's two things here. There's candidate and there's race. So candidate is the person um, themselves and this is like the home page for each person. Oh, and this is really important. I'm so glad we went to this. Okay, you see here, their phone, their email, their mailing address, city, state, zip, etc. Okay, what are we doing with this? This is internal to the party. And this is going to be a tool for the coordinated campaign committee to get a hold of all of our candidates. So each cycle, um, they want to be able to outreach to them for a variety of reasons. The National Party provides financial support. There's involving people in press work we do, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So first, you want to enter all of this information. And if you're a state party, contact an agent doing this. Your state party should have this info, but sometimes you don't. And what happens then? So I do the research. So if you go to, say, your county registrar's page, there will be publicly available information for each candidate. Most states have a rule that you have to provide ca contact information for yourself. So I will go and do that research or on your candidate page or on your Facebook page and take the time to find as much information there as you can of that person. Then here, their contact information on the right side there, their website, their Twitter, their Facebook. People have personal stuff compared to their public stuff sometime. And that's another tool that we can use to get a hold of them. Then, okay, we have female, male, and we have another box uh, for non-female and male. This doesn't show to the public. And then candidate, race, and ethnicity. So we went ahead and kind of combined here both what census work does and I don't remember what our other sources, I have that written down somewhere. But so we have these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven categories. You can also check both for the person. And this gives us an ability um, to go ahead and do some analysis of what is the racial and ethnic breakdown of our candidates and the gender breakdown. And what's going to happen is as each state party um, appoints an agent, there is an export tool where you can export the database into a spreadsheet. I'm going to be sending a copy of each state's spreadsheet to them that's going to have all these columns and that's going to give them an ability to look through in an easy way how many states don't have that information because a lot of states will know this information that I don't um, if I can't determine it from looking at their their stuff and then here's the thing about setting the featured image so we have a uh, a library of pictures here of all these smiling faces of all of our greens um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we've had a database problem. We've lost a bunch here. We're gonna have to go back and get some more. And what happens here is 
there's an upload file. You go to your, your hard drive, you pick the picture, you upload it, you enter them, et cetera, et cetera. And then that becomes their picture on the front end. So, so this is one of the places that it's really helpful to have the agents from the states to add all this contact information. Also, when we revive the green office holder network, we need to be able to contact with email all of our former green office holders and get them together. Um, and, because we're, we're totally wasting the fact that we have registered greens, excuse me, uh, holding, holding elected office, green office holders. We, don't, we barely involve them at all. So now that you've had that thing for a race, now let's say that you want to an, uh, enter a candidate who's running for uh, a new, uh, new race. Uh, so let's say here that Nick, uh, Nick, <laughs> Lou Novak runs for Grand Puba 2020. Okay, so now we would go in here and, oops, and we want to find, so Lou, I thought you were in here already. I, I, I looked myself up. I was in there. I don't know. Oh, Lewis. It's yeah. Lewis. Oh, it's Lewis. That's right. Okay. So, good. So, by the way, there we would also change this to Lewis. We, we want to keep it consistent if we can. Um, so, so, Lou is in there, and we find him, and that means this race would check back to the, to the Lou no, Novak homepage. And, um, and then you go through all of this stuff again. Um, one of the the harder things to get used to here. Okay, all offices. So let's, Grand Puba isn't a, an office, but let's say that Lou is running for one of those fun statewide offices they have in Michigan, of which they have a lot. Um, you have, let's, name me one, Lou. Uh, uh, State Board of Education. Okay, so um, actually the, state, the education thing is a, is a little, little more curveball, but let me show you through first and then I'll get to what Lou's saying. So. First, we have the federal races, and this whole setup mirrors those selection keys I showed you before about how do you learn how many greens ran in each of those. This is the back end tool that kind of connects. So first we have the federal races, and then um, state constitutional. And this is where, for example, you have two different names for the state, the same office. Secretary of State and a subset in Massachusetts is of the Commonwealth. Both of those will fit together in the Secretary of State search field um, later on. And this is a lot of work uh, to create this chart. And also what's gonna happen is when your state agents are working on this, Secretary of Agriculture Commissioner, State Agriculture Commissioner, um, you may find a few races that aren't listed. Um, it's always possible we have large numbers. Anyway, so oh, you start with federal. Mike, I hate to interrupt, but we yeah. actually passed our time. I knew we were, uh, yes. We, we do have a 15-minute buffer, so we can go on a little bit longer. But uh, Nikila Nanda wanted to make a comment, so I'll ask him to unmute himself and go make for his it. comment. And if anybody else has a question for Mike uh, in the next and five I'm gonna minutes. Just keep, while we're doing that, I'm just going to keep scrolling down, and you see how different types of offices are mixed together. And until you get used to it for your own state, you're just going to have to scroll but you will know that city is together, county is together, education is together, state is together. You know, here's the education. Okay, Nikki, go ahead. Yeah, Michael, brilliant, thank you. Uh, I wanna go back to when you said who was a green, and I'll try to make it really quick because I know we've run out of time. Uh, Hawaii had, it has a rule, and this, it's in our bylaws, so it's with the state, that you have to go through the Green Party to be able to run as a Green. So we got a clown off the ballot years ago who ran for governor. Two years ago, we had someone who signed up uh, to run for Congress uh, in the first district, Honolulu, and the uh, coordinating committee didn't do anything about it. I kept on saying, do something. Anyway, and he was right. He was politically right of uh, the Republicans, and it was an embarrassment. So whenever I sent out anything, media stuff, I never included him. But as far as your database, he ran as a Green, was on the ballot as a Green, ran for U.S. Congress as a Green, and he, to me it was an embarrassment. So I just wonder how that works. And my last thing is that my recommendation is that every state has in their bylaws where someone, to get on the ballot, uh, they have to go through this process. That way you can go to court. And I know it's costly, but we did it uh, to get someone who's just using the Green Party. 
Can you give us his name again? Uh, uh, Zach, uh, I, I blocked it. I think it's Zachary Bard or Zachary ba Bird. Yeah, Zachary Bird from uh, 2018 ran for Congress. On the ballot as a Green. So, um, oops. So obviously there are very easy states where, um, so here's, here's the guy that they yeah, talk there about. He is. Right. Yep, there he was. So, Shit. <laughs> so if a person is on the ballot with the name Green Party next to them, and I don't want to get into too much of the weeds because there are different states, situations in different states, um, you know, uh, <laughs> the state in, in those cases has recognized them as a Green Party candidate. So you get into that question about, so I mean, here's, all right, so what we did, here we had that guy, here's, here's the government results, that takes us to the official governmental results page for Hawaii. Uh, we look for his name, Bird, and here we are here where he's on the ballot and what would have made sense in that situation here is your state party would have had an explan explanatory statement about him um, explaining that situation. And where we have a gray area, we try and provide as much information as possible in that way. Um, by the way, I see Emma Lugo, uh, her name is on here. Emma, Oregon is one of those states where your municipal offices are nonpartisan. And I don't know whether you, and you had a lot of good success with uh, Greens getting elected on the, the local level. And, uh, and you have a long history of that. You should be congratulated on that. Uh, Michael Bielstein here is, is one of those folks um, who has been, thank, but- Thank you, thank you, yes we do. It's, and we got vote by mail, which is great. So the question is like, for, you're one of those states, here, here's Michael's um, history, he's run many times. Here, you're one of those states where there may be Greens who are running in municipal partisan office that you don't know of. And if you can compare your list of registered Greens to Greens who run in those offices, like in California, you may find there are several, several people who simply haven't made their party affiliation a big deal but have run for local office. We'll look into that, thank you. You're, you're welcome. Okay, Lou, any more questions? Um, no, there are plenty of comments thanking you for this great work, awesome work. Um, everybody's very uh, looking forward to exercising the elections database. And uh, well, anybody, I'll open up the floor. Are there any, uh, any last uh, comments or questions? You just please unmute yourself and then uh, I'll give Mike the last word. Thank you guys. Okay, so you, you see here, this is my email address, mfeinstein at feinstein.org. All right, so if your state party will appoint an agent and, and at, from the coordinated campaign committee, we want somebody who is picked by your party. Um, we don't want to pick for you, but if you can pick somebody who is able and you believe would be would be capable of responsibly entering data on behalf of your state party into this word based uh, word WordPress based um, uh, platform, then please send their name to me soon, and we are going to train them in. It's most important for the states that have candidates coming up um, in November, so that I don't have to enter all that data. Um, that others can start doing it, but we want people to be knowing this uh, for the long term. So send that to me. And as um, uh, as uh, Lou said about exercise, um, our muscles become strongest if we exercise them. This is a database that you should use as much as possible in this wide open white space here. What I'm going to um, to recruit so that when we post this to social media, that there's a picture that pops up because there isn't one right now, but we have this space. I, I am going to be recruiting Greens to create a word cloud that has Green Party and election and our 10 key values and our thoughts about running for democracy and accountability and transparency and all those things. And then put that green word election word cloud here. So when you all 
have candidates that run get in the habit of also including this database of also uh, including the links um, and like on social media, Charlene here from Central Mass, um, she's just got on the ballot running for state house. And I follow their Central Massachusetts Facebook page where she announced her candidacy. Well, under that announcement on Facebook, I took this link of her race. And it's one more place that has one more level of information um, in addition to uh, her own website. And it's just another way of promoting, get, getting more people to know about this. One more thing I want to show you. See more about this office here? I haven't filled this in on all of them, but this one takes you to, in Massachusetts, um, to the Massachusetts, well, that's, well, okay, there we go. That takes you to that elected body. So if you're running for a city council, I will have a link back to that city council or school board. That does two things. One, in general, it's just one more information, one more professional piece of information where you learn about that body. And then two, if the green is already an incumbent, you'll see a picture of them. And then the same thing here. Well, what other greens have run for, run for state house? Then you go ahead and click that baby and that will take you to the list of all the greens who have run for uh, the state house. So that's an overview, stay in touch, get your states involved, um, use this, post this on social media. And we've spent a good amount of money on this as the national party. And essentially to close, we've been spending money to enhance the ability to gather and publish data. We're close to finishing that phase. And then the analysis portion is the next phase. And we will link to a whole lot of different reports generated out of this database as well that you're all going to be able to use. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Excellent work. Excellent presentation. Um, like I said, if you can open up the chat, there's plenty of uh, uh, thanks and uh, compliments on your work. Um, we've got about five minutes for the next uh, workshop which starts at the top of the hour, 4 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, 1 p.m. Pacific. And there is somebody around 10 a.m. in Hawaii. Wow, it's not even lunchtime yet. Uh, that next presentation from Felina Farley is on linking CRM strategy, tactics, and metrics to the strategic plan. And that will be starting in uh, about five minutes. Thank you, folks. It's not even lunchtime. It's not even breakfast time. Uh, <laughs> and how do I, I see? I can't get back to see all the nice comments. It's so rare in politics that I'm not getting yelled at. Go, um, go to the bottom of the Zoom window. There's a chat button. The chat button will open up the chat window. And because I have this screen share thing, I'm not seeing that. So I have to close that. And get back into zoom here we oh god here we go um mike i deleted all the bad comments to you <laughs> <laughs> you know i've developed a pretty thick skin um you are screen sharing oh i have to stop share that's it okay now i see it um